Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I have a video here that I'm going to do a voiceover for. Uh, this was a horse that at a clinic that I did recently in Minnesota, and he had a really strong habit of breaking to a canter instead of trotting. So basically any kind of trotting that the owner tried to do, he would step into a canter. It was a newer horse to her. She'd had him a couple of months, and um, uh, I just wanted to get on to myself and kind of give them an example of how to teach a horse to extend the trot and shorten the trot without cantering. So you could saw in that clip there, as he stepped into the canter, I bent him around and just put a little pressure on him and just gave him a correction. And I was very consistent with that. Then I kind of pointed out that he licked and chewed. So I don't take off again right away after the horse breaks gate. So here again, I'm kind of pushing him into that faster trot. As soon as he thinks a little bit faster, he breaks to a canter. So same correction, bend him around, disengage. I'm just letting him run into a little bit of pressure there, just letting him know that's not the right idea. So they're not into trouble. They're not in trouble there. Um, and I, you want to be really consistent with this correction. That is the whole key here. If you're inconsistent with it, where sometimes you let it go, sometimes you take it, sometimes you don't, um, that's not going to fly. So you got to be consistent, and you also want to make sure you have a very deliberate cue that you use to ask the horse for an extended trot. So I'm going to kind of stand up in the stirrups and uh, push my hand forward um, and do a rising trot. See there, you can see I'm kind of, I guess I'm going to keep posting here, but I'm just extending my hand out forward. And I'm trying to use both legs evenly and just asking him to speed up. And um, there is a little bit better already. He's not thinking about cantering quite so fast. And there he went ahead and did it. And also notice I let him get about three or four strides into that canter before I interrupt it. And I interrupt. I bend him around, put a little pressure on. I'm not just trying to stop him and slow down. Um, but I, I, I call it signing him up. Let him get committed to that canter so that when pressure comes on, it's very clear that that happened during the canter and not during trot. And uh, as the horse gets more sure that you just want them to stay in a trot, uh, they're able to extend that trot, put a little more life into it without thinking change gear. So ironically, this actually will help your horse have an even better canter too, because they're not thinking about switching gears in terms of changing speeds. They start thinking about it in terms of changing gates. So again, going to bend him around. Um, he's pretty committed to it. Um, this is like a maybe an eight-year-old horse or something. You could just tell he just had a lot of canter departures um, probably out of the trot. Um, and that's also why I would prefer horses to go walk canter when they're well further far enough along in their development to do that. And I just let the trot be extended the trot, shorten the trot. And I don't do a lot of cantering out of the trot. I always could when I want to. Um, there you can see him relaxing, putting his head down. He's starting to have a connection to my idea. I'm kind of getting along with the flow here. And uh, here I can extend him out pretty far. So each time you see we made a little further or past the whole circle here. And then I just keep challenging it. I'm, I'm, I'm really squeezing with my legs here. I've got a lot of life in my, my body. Asking him to move forward. Giving him a big loose rein. Lots of opportunity there to think about cantering. And uh, you can see he kind of was thinking about that left lead. It's like, well, maybe the right lead is what he doesn't want. Maybe I should try a left lead. Um, but again, I keep it consistent, disengaging him there. Now, one thing that's important, this horse thought he was supposed to canter. So he wasn't getting impulsive. He just thought he was supposed to canter. So if your horse at home is getting impulsive and just speeding up there, when you bend them around, you want to bend them until their feet start to get a little bit sluggish. Um, so in other words, if you bend them down and they're feeling um, impulsive, they're going to go real fast. And uh, you need to just wait until those feet get a little slower when you disengage them. So you can see as soon as I bend him down, he slows down. That's what you're waiting for. So make sure that they're thinking in the let's slow down box before you release them and try that trot again. So I think we're right here is, is uh, about where it started making sense. Now I'm waiting for him to lick and chew there, right there. You can just see it in the corner of his mouth there, licking and chewing. If you don't give him that moment to decompress, he got relief there slowing down and thinking versus speeding up into the canter. So that's why it's important to, to let him sit and soak there instead of just powering through and getting right back into that trot. So I'm just giving him a chance to think about it here. This is more of the teaching stage. I might go a little quicker and refine it as I go along. But when you're initially teaching this, give him time to soak. So let's see how he does here. I think he's starting to get the idea. That's looking good. He's kind of staying more committed there. Oh, he did it again. Um, and, it, and this horse was above average difficult at this in terms of how frequently he broke eight. This that lesson actually can go quite a bit faster than this with a horse that just doesn't know. But for this horse, he was really sure, like, like he was trained to just canter there out of the trot. And so that's why it took him a little bit longer. 
Um, that's also the reason I was riding him instead of the owner um, in the clinic because she started questioning the technique and, and what was what we were doing uh, just because it really wasn't working yet for her. So um, I decided to step up on him and, and uh, just give it a try myself. There, and you can see he's getting more and more relaxed as we go. That head's dropping. Um, his legs are nice and soft. Oh, here he's looking pretty committed. And he's got a nice, nice forward trot there. So I'm just going to let him be right here and uh, not push it too much. Um, but every day, if, if you don't accidentally break gate from time to time, you're not challenging it far enough. And that breaking gate, whether you go too fast into a lope or breaking gate where you slow down and they, they break to a walk instead of a slow trot. So this one was all about that extended trot. And um, you can see here he's pretty committed to the idea. So very happy with this. Um, this is a great exercise to do. I do this all the time in my warming up. Um, so make sure you give it a try when you're at home. And uh, there I just stopped him straight, gave him a pat, and said, had a good boy. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.